everything you need to know about staying at the JW Marriott Desert Ridge Phoenix Hotel. In this video, I'm gonna show you around the common areas of the hotel, the inside of one of the rooms, and I'm gonna share with you my pros and cons and let you know whether you should consider staying here or not. All right, let's go. The JW Marriott Desert Ridge is one of Arizona's largest hotels with 950 hotel rooms spread out across five different wings in a building that's about six stories tall. This is a true resort style property. It's got lots of great resort amenities that we'll take a look at in just a moment after we take a look at the lobby and some of the other main sort of hotel amenities. So as you go in the front valet entrance, yes, valet parking is one of the options, you come into the grand lobby. As you look down from the grand lobby, there's a lounge down there, like a bar, and then entrance to the pool area that we'll check out also in just a moment. To the right is the surprisingly small check-in and reception area, pretty low ceilings over here, which I found this odd. I did like that on the other side of the lobby, they had like infused waters hanging out all the time. Continuing down this way in the hallway, there is a Starbucks coffee and a gift shop. And then looking back down on that lounge on the lower level, this place was pretty hopping at night times. Lots of people seem to like to hang out at this bar down here. Now going through those doors at the bottom. This brings us out to like a patio area. There's a number of different restaurants that have seating areas out here. There's like the Hotel Southwest restaurant, Tio Carmen. This one is also where the breakfast buffet is. There's the Asian restaurant over here, which also has a really neat seating area. This one was particularly cool at nighttime with the red lanterns. And in addition to the seating at the restaurants, there's just lots of common seating that you can sit around and flop around by fireplaces, in neat comfy chairs, in bean bags, uh, and then just on the other side of this water feature is the really impressive pool complex. Before you get to the pool complex, there is the family friendly area here where you can have a bunch of kids and family activities. And since this is a resort, they do have a sign that tells you about all of the different resort activities that you can sign up for. Some are free, some are paid. By the way, at the time I'm making this video in 2024, this hotel has a resort fee of $55 in addition to the room rate. All right, heading into the pool complex, there is lots of aquatic real estate at this place. There is a lazy river that you can float around. There are big, just gigantic pools, pools with islands in the middle of them, pools that have like only reserved seating, so you can be a little bit exclusive. Of course, you can pay more money and rent cabanas. There's a gigantic, actually like water park area with a whole bunch of really big water slides, some that you just go on down without an inner tube, some that you go on with an inner tube. If you're hungry, there's a restaurant and a bar inside the pool. You can order like room service, not room service, but like service to your seat. You can also just eat it at the tables right here. My favorite seating area is definitely the ones around this fire pit that look down on the area of the hotel we took a look at before. Also, uh, if it's not too warm, then you can go in the hot tub that overlooks the golf course. But related to being warm, I think a great part about coming to this hotel in Arizona is Arizona's like always warm. I was here in February, and even though it was a cloudy day, the temperature was still 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and so you can enjoy the pools almost all year round at this hotel. Now, if you wanna get your exercise another way, there is a big fitness center that's open 24 hours. In addition to the machines, they also have classes like spin classes and aerobics classes. It is in the building with the spa, so all of the spa things are gonna cost extra money. The fitness center included in your room rate. You can also rent bicycles outside for up to two hours uh, at a go for free. Well, included in your resort fee. Is that free? Whatever, we'll go ahead and call it free since you're paying that anyway. There's also another restaurant here next to the spa. Parking at the hotel, I already mentioned the valet parking up at the front. There's also ample self-parking for $25 a day, although the self-parking not very close to the hotel. Uh, since you figure they're parking a thousand cars for all of the rooms, the walk from your parking space can be quite long to actually get into your room. If you're driving in from Phoenix Airport, the drive is about 30 minutes to get here. If you didn't rent a car from the airport, you can rent one on site. There's a car rental agency right in the hotel. 
And there's also a really impressive racket center that has tennis courts and also pickleball courts. It also appears that the hotel, in addition to providing these amenities to hotel guests, also kind of like rents them out to the public via a club sort of scheme uh, that looked to be $100 to $200 a month if you wanted to buy into some of these amenities if you're a local to the Phoenix area. And of course, I mentioned the golf course. Yes, there is a gigantic set of golf courses here in the back. Also a golf course clubhouse uh, that has a restaurant here too. And then in between the five wings of the hotel, you'll find various like gardens and green spaces. Yes, Phoenix is a desert, but they have decorated and landscaped these very nicely. There is the JW Garden where like, it's actually like a little garden that you can walk through. There's also the Island of Capri that like has a little bit of island over here. I mean, this looks like a place that pro probably people have weddings, but a pretty picturesque setting from the rooms over on these wings. By the way, this is not the view my room has, so stay tuned for the view from my room. Not quite as nice. Now that we've seen everything around the hotel, let's check out the inside of one of the rooms. This is room 5568, a two queen bedroom on the fifth floor. And so first we'll start with the two queen beds. Interesting brown headboard up on the back with almost looks like a desert sunset. A uh, nice leather finish back here on the headboard. Some lights here in the middle, some reading lights over on the side. USB power outlets in the center. What is under here? We have the Book of Mormon and the Holy Bible for your reading pleasure. There is a small lounger over here with a light that doesn't work, I should point out. A couple chargers in the back, but I don't know if those work either. Uh, this room has a balcony and it's nighttime, so you don't see an amazing view out here, but you can see my balcony has two chairs on it with a little table. And what do I look out on? I look out on the rooftop of the convention center. In the daytime, it looks like this. Not that much more spectacular. Uh, there are definitely more spectacular views on the other side of the hotel. I guess I didn't pay enough to get a view room. All right, heading back in from the balcony, we have a nice little table right here that doubles as the desk in the room. Only one chair for this table. Two beds, but only one chair, kind of odd. Nice little lamp right here, creating a pool of light. There is a big, big screen television up here, which tells you all about the hotel and other things. Ice bucket up on this down here. We've got a little sliding shelf that has a Illy espresso coffee machine, coffee machine, two bottles of water, uh, coffee supplies down here. We've got some empty drawers that you can put your stuff in. This one has the in-room safe. And then over here, we have the smart fridge. So this is a fridge just for you to put your stuff in and nice. They had two balls of water in here, keeping cold. So I do like this room has a fridge. And then right down here underneath the luggage area is a little uh, drawer to put your stuff in too. And I like this little nook so you could put your bags or luggage or whatever. There's my level eight suitcase here in the corner. And here's the closet in the room. What do we got? We got robes. Wow, hotels that have robes. Look at that ironing board iron. There is a mirror right in front of the closet so you can look and see how you look. How do I look? Good. By the way, this is my black yellow production shirt that I wear when I'm traveling because I just got off the plane here so this uh, doesn't reflect on the in-flight entertainment screens. Here's the bathroom. Big bright bathroom. We got a big sink area right here. One sink. Big mirror. Nice and bright. Big tub. I'd call it a kind of soaking tub. It looks like it's deep but it's not super duper long. And then over here, we have the toilet and we have the separate shower, glassed in shower, one fixed shower head up here. And the soaps are aromatherapy soaps in these containers, so you don't get to take any of those home. What do they have over here? We've got aromatherapy body lotion, bath soap, and we've got, uh, what's this thing? What is this thing? This thing is mouthwash. They really have a lot of amenities here, even gentle cleansing face wipes too. 
Now that we've seen it around the room, if you watch my hotels regularly, you'll know it's time for my room review, where I rate hotels on a scale of one to five Topher's. Topher is my traveling panda buddy, and Topher is gonna tell me this hotel is worth four Topher's. And so now we'll talk about the pros and the cons of whether it's worth four Topher's, and then we'll talk about is it worth it. Uh, and so first, I have to tell you how much this hotel sells for, and this hotel really ranges in price. In the low season, which is summertime, June, July, August, you can get this hotel for as cheap as the mid 200s. Uh, but in the high season, which is like spring break, you'll find this hotel going seven, eight, nine, even a thousand dollars a night. And so I think whether it's worth it, which we're really gonna answer at the end, does depend a bit on how much you're gonna pay to stay here. All right, so let's talk about the pros. Pros, this is a very well-maintained, nice resort feeling JW Marriott. Lots of green, lots of amenities on the property, amazing pool complex. And so this is the kind of hotel that you don't really wanna stay here just as a base and then go see Phoenix. You wanna stay here to enjoy the resort, which I think means you wanna spend probably at least two nights here so that you've got a full day of enjoying the pool, eating by the pool, doing golf, the racket club, playing in the arcade, eating here, just like enjoying this property because there is so much to do on the property and renting the bicycles on the property. Like those are all the things and why you're paying so much money is for the resort amenities, which are indeed very nice and well-maintained. I recently stayed at the JW Marriott in Palm Springs, which is a similar style hotel, big resort sort of thing. Definitely not maintained as well as this one. And this hotel is 22 years old, roughly. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't show its age, it still feels very new. The room itself, everything was maintained, everything was working, well, except that one light bulb that was out, but you know, that happens anywhere. I slept well, the room was quiet. Uh, also, big bathroom, I like the separate tub, I like the separate shower. I would love if there was a handheld in the shower, which there wasn't, so pro tip to Marriott, handheld would be nice. And the staff here was all pleasant, friendly. I like that the parking is plentiful, and now we'll get into the cons. I don't like that the parking is a long walk, really long walk to the parking, which is another one why this isn't a great base to tourist around Phoenix. This is good if you wanna stay at the hotel, you park your car once and just hang out here for a while. If you're gonna be going back and forth to your car a lot, you're gonna get pretty tired of the long, long walk. Another con, uh, this is particularly for Marriott elite members. This hotel does not have a concierge lounge. There's something they call the Griffin Club, which you have to like buy into. It's not something that you get as a elite um, Marriott Bonvoy member for staying here. The free breakfast benefit is provided for elite members in the one of the restaurants. It is a, they, they've taken the like, you're gonna get the minimum Marriott requirement, which is a continental breakfast buffet, and they have a hot section of the buffet, and if you wanna have the hot section of the buffet, then they charge you $12 more to have the hot section of the buffet. The resort fee is $55. All of these things is the like, this feels like a place that tries to nickel and dime you on all these things, you know, $12 more for breakfast. Oh, they, as part of the resort fee, you get a free dessert at any one of the restaurants. And at like 9.15, I went to the front desk and I was like, oh, what restaurants can I redeem my free dessert at? And he's like, oh, they're, yeah, they're all closed. They close at nine. I'm like, they close at nine? Well, yeah, yeah they clearly close at nine for my free dessert. You know, maybe if I'm paying, maybe they would be open longer. I mean, I don't really know that that's a fact, but that just continues to be the, like, you're just gonna cost you a little more for this. It's gonna cost you a little more for this. It's gonna cost you a little more for this, as opposed to just providing those things included in your room rate because the room rates can be pretty high. Okay, so now let's talk about is it worth it and maybe how much is this hotel worth? Certainly if you're here in the summer, I think it could absolutely be worth prices in the 200s with that easy place to stay, great hotel, very nice, great staff, big room, quiet sleep, all those sorts of things. If you are here and paying $1,000 a night, Ooh, that's really expensive, and I don't think it's worth $1,000 a night. I was recently staying in Las Vegas at the Venetian Hotel, where the rooms are three times as big as this, and uh, paid $600 a night on New Year's Eve to stay at the Venetian on the Las Vegas Strip. And so, then what would I say this hotel would be worth? I, you know, maybe $500 a night for the room. Chris, that's still a lot of money. 
Phoenix in spring is a very expensive place to stay. And so you'll see a lot of the high-end resorts going for a lot of money. $500 would make it competitive. And I feel like in line with a lot of the other nice resorts around here, $1,000 really makes it super crazy. Oh, the last con is the location. It's not really near the super touristy parts of Phoenix. Like Old Town Scottsdale is really want to be if you're touristing around Phoenix. Uh, and so, you know, if you were coming here for a few days, you know, maybe come stay at this resort to enjoy the resort amenities and then move into Old Town Phoenix to be able to walk around and see the sites and the shops over there. Or just know you're going to drive. It's about a 30 minute drive from here to get to Old Town Scottsdale. So now the question is, should you stay at this hotel? And I think if you get a good rate uh, under 500 bucks uh, and you're looking for that resort experience, then absolutely consider it. If you're coming here and you're paying a thousand bucks at night, then you might be a little disappointed. And there is one last thing for you to know, and that is I've got more videos on Phoenix. If you wanna check out my Phoenix travel guide, you can check it out right here. If you wanna see uh, maybe my visit to the Grand Canyon that I did through this whole area, you can check that out right here. And as usual, I won't say goodbye, because I'll see you in one of these videos.